just call him. That's funny. How y'all doing? We're going to go ahead and get started. If you uh, if you need a spit cup, cups are back there, napkins. While you're there, get you a donut, a cup of coffee, water, whatever it is you need. Men, you can do the same. <laughs> yeah. All right. Man, y'all ready to see what God has for us today? I am too. I am too. Hey, can I, can I, I love this. Can I be honest with you? Y'all remember when? <laughs> Some of you remember what I said. Anytime somebody says that, I always think, well, you've been lying to me the whole time. Well, I, uh, you know, there, we had to get stuff done or, around the house and, and I hadn't been able to get it done, you know, just stuff, you know, life happens, things happen. And uh, so I had full intention to find a, find a fill in for today. And, uh, but I asked the Lord, I stopped, I said, Lord, I said, is that okay? And he said, no. So, <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, well, you know, he goes, I already know. And so it's just awesome how it is that if we'll follow God, he just, he just gives you the, the best stuff, and he just blesses you with his presence. We're in his will, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you, he, he gave me a message for today that, that is really a message for today, and I, I'm excited to, to deliver that. And uh, before we do, uh, I want to I share this with you. Just always got to give a plug. I got to give a plug for the Lord. And, uh, I, you know, when you're praying for stuff, I don't, you know, some of you may get your prayers answered right away. And, uh, you know, sometimes that doesn't work like that for me. It doesn't mean that he don't answer them. It just sometimes doesn't happen right away. Well, I noticed the other day, and uh, I said, I reached out there, and I was checking my tire, had to air a tire up or something, and I noticed, like, man, I'm going to have to have a new set of tires. matter of fact, I didn't even pay attention to them. I don't even know if these are going to pass inspection. I mean, I didn't have any metal showing, but I didn't. I was like, oh, man, Lord, that's a, you know, y'all know uh, tires for a truck, they ain't cheap. And uh, I'm like, man, Lord. I said, but that's all right. I know you're going you're gonna to provide. I'm going to trust you. I ain't going to worry about it anymore. Lord, I thank you for a set of tires. I don't know how you're going to do it. I just know you're going to do it. And uh, so <laughs> that was a couple weeks ago. So I got to visit with a brother of mine, and, and I walked out, and I said, I said, whoa, Lord, in the parking lot. I said, somebody got them a brand-new Dodge Ram. He said, that'd be my truck. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, man, that's nice. He said, 2025. I said, let me see. So we opened the door. I wanted to smell it. How many of y'all love it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I smell it, and it increases my faith. Lord, I can see me driving a 2025. <laughs> uh, no, I ain't one of them name it, claim it guys, but I do dream. You know, I dream. And uh, I was like, whew. Oh, Lord. And, uh, and I stepped back. I said, man, that's a good-looking truck. Dude, this is awesome. He said, yeah. He goes, but I'm going to have to buy some all-terrain tires because this is my work truck. And he said, I got to get some all-terrain tires if you know anybody that needs a brand-new set off of 2025. <laughs> I said, me? He said, come on. I said, I'm telling you, brother, it's me. He goes, what do you drive? I said, Dodge Ram. He said, let's look at the size. And we did. And we went and looked at mine. And he said, I'll have them for you by Tuesday. <laughs> hey! Hey, some Bridgestone Firestone. Come on. And uh, I'm like, really, God, you can't give me Michelins? No. No, that's not what you do. <laughs> but sometimes don't we do that? Well, maybe not y'all holy people. But us, some, you know, I have. Lord, not being thankful for what God provided, you know. And I was. I was shouting. I'm like, whoo hoo gee, look at here. Now you know what my tough decision is? White wall in or white wall out? <laughs> Praise God. I said all that to say, I don't know what you're believing for. I don't know what you've been praying for. But don't give up. Don't give up. Trust Him. And don't worry about it. Don't worry over it. God's going to provide for you. He's done a great job up to this point. He's not going to let you down or fail you now. So you keep on believing. You keep on trusting. It may not work out like you thought it would, but I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be good, and you're going to be blessed. Amen? Amen. All right, a uh, couple of things. Uh, one, we got Western Days coming up uh, right here in Hallsville. We have the, we have the pavilion that's in the, it's in the park. Uh, we say the pavilion, the covered porch right there in the, uh, in the center of, of the park here in Hallsville. They give that to us every year. Of course, we'll have the buck and bull there. We're going to set up tables. Uh, we set up tables just like we always do. We really need at least two people from each team or more, or more. 
and not just limited. If you don't serve on a team, you go to this church, you come on. You come on. And uh, what time does that start? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Well, we start setting up. Um, around 9 setting up, but the parade starts at 10. Okay. But if you want to be at the pavilion by 10, because when the parade gets down there, it's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. So you want to get down there early. Yeah, we need your help. We really try to just love on folks, passing out Bibles, and, and, uh, and just sharing the love of Jesus Christ. So that's, that is uh, October the 5th. Be at the pavilion right there in the center of the park at nine o'clock. It, she's right; it does get super busy, by right after the right after the parade. Second thing is October the sixth. What day? Six. Sunday the sixth. What day is that after? Fifth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's right after uh, Western Days on the fifth Sunday, October the sixth at five p.m. We're going to have our annual pond baptism. It'll be at Neil and Paula Young's place right there on Cal Young Road. And uh, so if you, we've already had a couple that have come to us and said, you know, the Lord is really impressed on me to get baptized. And, and uh, I said, you know what, uh, we, got, we got the place for it. It'll be a great time, a celebration. Put it on your, your calendar, October the 6th. And uh, it's a, it'll be a bring your own food. And uh, bring your own food, bring your own chair, bring something potluck. We'll put it out. We're going to celebrate Jesus. We're going to fill our bellies. We're going to fill our spirit. And, uh, and then uh, the pond's already full. And we're going to use, uh, we're gonna use it. We're going to do some baptizing. So if that's you, and I can promise you this one thing for sure. If you're like, man, I don't know, but I've been feeling like maybe I need to be baptized, but I'm not sure. The devil ain't never going to tell you to be baptized in the name of Jesus. I can promise you that. So if you've been feeling like, you know, maybe, maybe I need to be baptized. Jesus is my Savior, and I know, but I've never made him the Lord of my life. I still have control of my life, but I want it to be Jesus. That's a great place to start. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, let me introduce you to a man who loves you just as stinky and foul as you are and loves you, gave full price for you just like you are. And let me introduce you to him, and we'll follow up in baptism. So if that's you, in either, in either way, uh, you just get with any one of us, me, Mike's in the back. You can get with any, any, anyone here, anyone you know, that, and they'll point you the right direction. We'll get you, uh, we'll get you plugged in, um, but I'm excited about that. Uh, right now, I think we got, we got a spokesman. What we're going to start doing is each team, we're going to let each team plug their team you know, on a Sunday during announcements. Open Heart Women's Ministry tomorrow at 6, then they'll get back on track. Open Heart Women's Ministry tomorrow starting at 6. And uh, ladies, if you've been wanting to plug in somewhere, that's a great place. So Chuck Wagon team, Ruben, you representing? Thank y'all. So, yeah, like Sean said, we want to just take a minute and just kind of plug in each team uh, over the next few weeks and, and just give everybody the opportunity to, to know what, what that team's about and, and, uh, and who all's, you know, who all they can get in touch with if, if they want to serve there. So uh, today we want to talk about the – truck wagon team kind of brag on them a little bit first i just want to read their uh their mission statement and uh that's to to encourage to encourage relationships um in sharing among our church family by preparing fellowship meals so the uh, the verse goes along with that right there in acts um, 2 46 and 47 they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts preparing god uh, praising god and enjoying the favor of all the people uh, so, first of all, just to introduce Larry and Barb, uh, if y'all would stand up so everybody, everybody can see. Yes. Thank y'all. Hey, that's one of my favorite teams. Yes. Right there. Yeah, buddy. That, it, I, I will say, it, it is, that is an awesome team. They uh, fully led by the Lord. Right, They're plugged in right where they need to be, and uh, this church is so grateful to have them. Uh, that it, extremely active team. Uh they, they plugged in with with all all kinds of events. The the main thing is Wednesday night, the the meal. Y'all that come on Wednesday night know we we like to eat, so we they uh, they always have awesome food for us there. Uh, but some of the other things they do just to just kind of know what that team's all about. And so Wednesday nights, preparing the the meals for that, uh, purchasing all the food, um, you know, keeping keeping the whole kitchen stocked, the uh, the concession stand for the play days. Um, all the other events, the the Easter breakfast, the, all the Easter events, the fall fest, the Thanksgiving lunch. Um, anytime this church does any kind of um, 
you know, celebrations of life, memorials, that's, that team is always there just to step up and just, just be the face of, of, of Jesus in this church for, for those, uh, those families when they really need it the most. Um, they have an awesome, awesome crew, everybody that serves on that team. I mean, y'all, y'all see they got a few pictures going. Um, it's just an awesome team. They have a ton of fellowship, and they all do it for the right reason. Just love, love serving the Lord, love serving this church, and we're just uh, so blessed and grateful to have them. So thank you all. Thank you all for all you do. And if, uh, if, if y'all are wanting to get plugged in anywhere with the truck wagon team, like I said, just, just get with Larry, Barb, myself. We'll be glad to, glad to get you plugged in and, and, uh, and get you hooked up and serving, serving the church, serving the Lord. So, so thank you all. Reuben is our lay pastor, Chuck Wagon team, and uh, and thank you for that, Reuben. What you got, Mike? Thirty-five kids in the back. Amen. Woo-wee. We need to pray for them. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Father God, we thank and we praise you. What a beautiful day, Lord, and I just thank you that. Every day is a blessing day, and Father, I pray that you just help us to be more aware of what it is that you're doing in our lives. Some days, Lord, may feel like they're better than others, but I thank you, Lord, in, in every day, you are there who goes before us. You are the one who goes before us and prepares blessings that we could pick them up, receive them, put them on, use them. God, we just thank and we praise you for your many blessings. And most of all, Jesus, thank you for the price that you paid to restore fellowship with the Father. And Lord, we're thankful for that. It's through the Son that we have access to the throne of grace and mercy and love. And, Lord, we just thank you for all you've done, you continue to do. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this, this uh, team that's assembled today, Lord, to lead us in worship. I thank you, Father, that we participate, that we be active participants in, in, uh, in worshiping you. Lord, it's not just songs we sing. It's not just uh, music that we hear. Father, we are worshiping. It's the one that we worship. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you, Father, for all you've done, for all you continue to do. In Jesus' name, thank you for blessing this church the way you have. Amen. 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 Good morning. Is that a song? Are y'all ready to worship the Lord this morning? Stomp some feet. You know, this first song, I know... Y'all are gonna, y'all gonna, y'all gonna know it because it's a hymn medley. So it's a bunch of hymns. So guess what? Y'all can sing too. And we love that. Matter of fact, Wednesday night I, I didn't sing a few ver- a verse or something, and Donna I think she got mad at me, but I I love hearing young, them everybody sing. It's awesome. So welcome everybody. It's such a great day. Let's all. Uh, Worship, stand up, and worship the Lord this morning. Have you been to Jesus for his healing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood.
sing me a song of praise and glory. Help this wandering child to understand that when I close my eyes in sleep eternal, I'll be clinging to a saving hand. Sing to me about the rock of ages. Sing about eternity so sweet. So if when I take my last breath of life, I'll awaken at my face. Sing me a song of praise and glory. Help this wandering child to understand that when I close my eyes and sleep eternal, I'll be clinging. Tell me about Paul and Matthew And sing about my dear Savior's birth And tell about his trial and tribulation While he walked upon Sing me a song of praise and glory. Help this wandering child to understand that when I close my eyes and sleep eternal, I'll be clinging. Yes, I'll be clinging to the saving hand. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed.
punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sins punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are I'm going to say something before Jolie sings this. Um, when she first brought me this song, I was kind of like, mm, not sure if I like this song or not. But I usually try to let when people bring a song, give it a chance. Because what's something for them might not be what I get out of it. But the more I listened to it and the more I played around with it on the piano, um, the words are very simple, but they're also very true. Because it says, I want to meet with you more than just on Sunday. Um, I want a Monday morning faith. I want a Tuesday morning faith. Wednesday, Thursday, all, all week long. And uh, we always say, you know, we, can't, we have to come on Wednesday. We don't have to come, but, but uh, I think they're glad we're here. But <laughs> anyway, uh, but you know, Wednesday church for me has always been my recharging station. It's time for me to plug in. And get back in, you know, uh, get that little charge from Jesus during the week. But um, it's just talking about how he wants to meet with us every day of our life, not just on Sunday morning. So I hope y'all get that out of it. I want to meet with you more than Sundays. I want to know more than just my mother's faith Cause that's not enough to get through the rough Oh, I need a Monday morning thing I want to hear you in more than just one way Show your voice in all of the Monday things You're in the Darkness right is when the saints 
through the fires in your life it's more than just being on here on Sunday and it's more than just talking to God once a once a week uh, this song's called through the fire this next song and we all have fires we got to go through in life life Jesus said life is not easy it wasn't easy what he did either and uh, to get through those fires we got to trust in the Lord and Trust him and not do it our own way. A lot of times we're going to do it our way. And, you know, I think about the preacher and all the, the health issues they've had, and they've trusted the Lord all the way through it, all the way through it, and they're coming out of it, you know, getting through the fire. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances, things I could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision, and my frustrations get so out of hand. And I am reminded I've never been forsaken. I've never had to stand a test alone. As I look at all the victories, the Spirit rises up in me. And it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. He never promised. That the cross would not get heavy Or the hill would not be hard to climb He never offered victory without fighting But he said help would always come in time Just remember when you're standing In the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on our lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again i know within myself that i would surely perish well if i trust the hand of god He'll shield the flames again. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy or the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing 
in that valley of decision as the adversary says give in just hold on our Lord will do up and he will take you through that fire again just hold on I'm so glad I didn't find a fill in. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Needed that. Uh, I was I was thinking during worship. Thinking about the blessing that God had had, had blessed me with and and uh here's the cool thing about that. The Lord reminded me that yes, I got blessed with a set of tires, brand new set of Bridgestone Firestone tires. But here's the thing about that, and this is the other piece of that. It's not got nothing to do with the message. Here's the other piece of that. I saw that they had stuff they needed help with, and I had a pool to go ahead and leave. But instead, I stopped and I said, how can I help? And they said, oh, we got it. But I looked and saw, yeah, they got it. But they would have had to make a few trips. But here I was with empty hands and available to help. So I just went in. I picked up what they were doing. I carried it out. And as we're walking out, we're having a conversation that led to, woo-wee, that's a fine-looking truck right there. So that happens to be my truck. I never would have been in position to receive the blessing if I hadn't have been serving. Think about that, church. Think about that. What if I'd have said, yeah, it's easy, they got it, and I went on and left? I never would have known anything about the tires at all. But because I chose to stop and serve, I got the blessing. The helpers at the wedding of Cana that Jesus used to do the miracle got the greatest blessing because they got to see what it was that Jesus did when all the others just got to experience the blessing of the wine. Think about it, church. Think about it. Pray and ask the Lord, where do you want me to serve? And then, he's, hey, plug in, plug in. You'll get a great blessing when you plug in and start serving. That ain't got nothing to do with the message, but it was sure good. I could pray out right now, and I, I've had church. Man, I'm telling you, I have a 50-minute message. What time is it? <laughs> hey, did that clock stop, or is that really the time? That's okay. That's all right. I'm picking on you. Hey, I, I, uh, somebody, a, a church had invited me to speak one time. I thought it would be funny. Y'all remember that old, oh, I don't know what you call them, zebra printers, uh, barcode, bar line printers. Anyway, it, it's in sheets. And I thought it'd be funny if I got about 50 sheets and, I, and they're all connected. And I, I said, you know, I said, I've been preparing years to give this message. And when I stepped out, I accidentally on purpose dropped those sheets and they went floop, 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 floop. And I'm like, dang, y'all just saw all the notes that I'm going to be preaching today. And I bet you two thirds of them got up and walked out. Not true. I really, uh, two thirds of them might have stood up, but I told them I was just kidding and they sat back down. Today, I'm not kidding. 
Yeah, no, I Yeah, y'all didn't laugh at that, did you? <laughs> hey, we may need some more donuts and coffee. <laughs> no, it, 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 I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share exactly what it is that God wants me to share. And Father God, I thank you and I praise you. Praise you for this message, Lord. And, and I thank you, Lord, we, we always laugh at Mike because he says he hates to miss church because he's afraid he's going to miss something. And God, I just thank you and I praise you, Lord. I'm so glad that, that I listened to you. Father, I've been blessed already. Lord, thank you for these people. I, I heard today a preacher say that he preached in a church, and the pastor there said he hated where he preached, and he hated the church he preached at. I cannot imagine. <laughs> oh, that breaks my heart, Lord. I can't imagine. God, I'm so blessed. You have blessed us, Lord, here at Trails Inn, and I just thank you and praise you, Lord, for your blessing. I don't even have time to list all the ways. God, you are so good. The spirit of unity is so strong here. The spirit of love is so strong here. Your presence is so strong here. Lord, I get encouraged the closer I get. God, I thank you and I praise you for what you have for us today. God, I thank you for this message that you just poured into my spirit. I pray, Lord, that you prepare the heart to receive the seed of the word today, that it fall on good ground. I thank you, Jesus, that it fall on good ground that you have prepared. I pray now, Lord, that all the cares of this world, that they just drift out of our mind, they drift away. And I thank you, Lord, that we are ready to receive what you have for us today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you make this applicable to every single person here today in some way. God, we love you. Lord, I'm so blessed. All I can say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, and all trails in said, Amen. Ooh wee. Uh, title message today: Cut the rope. We're going to start off first in uh, Psalm ninety-one one. We've been there the last uh, been been there the last couple weeks, and uh, we won't we won't spend a whole lot of time there. But we are going back to our our base scripture. Those who live is he talking about everyone? Is he talking about every single person in blank? No, no. He's talking about, so it doesn't say here, all, all everybody, all inclusive, everyone. It's saying that those who will. So when it's saying those who will, then we can automatically know that there are some that won't. We agree on that? Those that will, that means you got to make a decision, church. We have to make a decision. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High, you have to make a decision that I'm going to choose to live. Does it say those who vacation in the shelter of the Most High? Those who get in and out of? Those who spend a little bit of time in? Those who neglect altogether? Those who live? In the shelter of the Most High, we'll find what? Rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We finished up last week with this. You will not rest in the shadow of anyone that you are not close to. You will not rest in the shadow of anyone that you are not close to. That means that we have to purposely, on purpose, get in presence of God Almighty if we want to experience the rest of the shadow of the Almighty you got to get in His presence. We have to spend time in His presence. Uh, A week ago, I shared with you the only way, when they made mention of it, the only way that we made it through all of the trials, tribulations as a family that we've been through, the only way that we were able to stay on top and continue doing what it was that God gave us to do is because I recognize the importance of living in the shelter of the Most High. Do I do it all the time? I can answer that. No, I don't. But I'm going to tell you what, when those tough times hit, those hard times hit, I know exactly where to go. I know exactly where I find my rest. I know exactly where I find my peace because I'm, I've experienced it. I'm not telling you about anything that I, don't, that I haven't experienced myself. I'm telling you, this is the scripture. This is the principle. This is the prescription that if you apply this to your life, You are going to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. You are going to be successful in areas where you failed before. 
but just like a bottle of pills that the doctor gave you uh, for, a, for a symptom, for a sickness, illness, symptom, whatever. You could have that bottle of pills. You could have it in your counter, but it will not work if you never take them. Amen? Same thing with the Word. I can give you this Psalm 91.1, and I can guarantee that it'll work because I've worked it, because I've done it, because I still do it, even this morning, even this morning, even right now. I don't have to be in that prayer position, in that posture, to only experience the goodness and the favor of God. I don't have to be in that posture to find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We talked about uh, in John, Jesus said, because I have resurrected, I am in you and you are in me. I am in the Father, Jesus said, and I am in you and you are in me. That rest comes when we spend time with Jesus Christ, mentally, in the word, praising. That is to live in the shelter of the Most High. Yes, we got business to do. So what if we're working on a spreadsheet? Work on your spreadsheet. Do what you got to do. Uh, tend your livestock. Do what it is you're doing throughout your day in the hay field, uh, on a shipping dock, on a loading dock, driving a truck, whatever it is that you do. You can still be in an attitude of prayer. Jesus, thank you. Man, I hadn't thought about you in a few minutes. Thank you for all you've done. I just praise you keeping that attitude that is living in the shelter of the most high i hadn't perfected it but i hadn't stopped either i may not get it right all the time but by golly i'm still going to shoot for it every time and i'm going to keep on keep on keeping on do you need do you need rest today do you need rest today in other words saying that well i didn't get much sleep last night i ain't talking about sleep i'm talking about rest it goes a lot deeper than whether or not you got a good night's sleep do you need peace? Do you need peace? I can't tell you how many Christians are being attacked by a spirit of fear, a spirit of anxiety, a spirit of worry, a spirit of doubt. And you know, it's no wonder social media feeds that all the time. Social media feeds it. Uh, the economy feeds it. By golly, the election feeds it. Uh, for <laughs> the election feeds it. And then the election feeds it. And then, <laughs> point three, the election still feeds it. Unrest in America. All these things. Man, I'm going to tell you what. I could get so angry and upset. And uh, I, I'm going to tell you, church, and I'll make a plug right here. We need to be prayerfully considering how we vote. You know what they said? Again, not in my notes. Uh, when they went back and they looked at the 2020 election, the, uh, a large majority of evangelicals, that's us, chose not to vote we could have been the difference maker we being our brothers and sisters nationally could have been the difference maker in the election just because you don't like uh, this one or that one doesn't mean that you don't vote at all doesn't mean we have a duty a responsibility to prayerfully consider who it is because they're running the nation we could not vote someone get in there and remove in god we trust off of this and now, or we have the unrest that we have today. You have to prayerfully consider. You have to participate. You have to. You have to. We cannot. We cannot take a chance on us being the dip, us being the reason. I want us to be the reason that the that the, the the person of God gets in office. I want I want us to be the reason that I want to know God. Who do you want me to vote for? And move in that direction. If you hadn't registered, register. Make sure that you're in position. We, my grandfather's fought and defended that flag so that we could be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have to prayerfully consider the direction that God wants us to go. And not just him, uncles, nephews, cousins, cousins. <laughs> think about that psalm 91 1 says will find rest not might find rest not could find rest might possibly find rest it says if you will live in the shelter of the most high you will find rest in the shadow of the almighty that's getting close to jesus you want to get in jesus shadow you get close to him 
you get close to him. Amen. I don't know how many, which leads me into the next piece. I don't know how many I've talked to, and they're not talking about sleep, but they say, I am just so tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm worn out. I'm stressed. I'm tired. <laughs> Think about this. Maybe we're weary because we have a hold of something that we ought to be letting go of. Or what is it that's got a hold of us that we need to cut loose from? This, uh, after I taught um, Wednesday, I had a couple of fellas come up and share a story with me that I forgot Mickey had shared with me uh, years ago. And uh, there, was this, uh, there was this cowboy who come down from Montana and spoke, <clears throat> spoke at, the, at the church. And that was while it was at y'all's place, wasn't it? Yeah, out there. And uh, he had come down and was, and was uh, teaching. He said they were on a cattle drive up in Montana. may not get the story exactly right, but you'll get the gist. They were on a cattle drive up in Montana, and uh, one, of them from, uh, one of them from their group uh, was off riding around in the, uh, in the edge of the timbers, and, and uh, he saw this, uh, saw this big old bear out there and thought it would be a good idea to rope it. So, <laughs> yeah, so he shook out a loop, and sure enough, he rode up and he roped that bear. He caught the bear. What he forgot was uh, he was tied off uh, to his saddle horn. So now he's tied off to the thing that he just caught. Well, when he roped the bear, what do you think happened then? Oh, yeah, the bear came at him. So when the bear's chasing after you and you're on horseback, you're riding in the other direction. I heard in my head during the story, so he's riding, the bear's chasing, and he rides through the camp. And he says, help. And I'm sure the first part of it was everybody was like, what in the world? And he rides out. He comes back and he says, what do I do? And he rides out. And he comes back around. And when he come back around, they hollered, cut the rope. And I'm sure somebody else hollered, over there. <laughs> but you think about that. There are some things, church, that we got to get cut away from. There are some things that we got to get cut away from. We got to get that cut off of us, or we got to cut ourselves away from that. Is there an area in your life that old slicks got you weighed down with something bigger than you? Is there an area in your life where old slick has got you weighed down with something bigger than you? Mm, every one of us. Some of us got similar things that we're weighed down with. Some of us got different things we're weighed down with. But many of us are weighed down to the point that it's something that we can't fix, we can't overcome. We're trying like heck to figure it out. But I'm going to tell you, when you're tied to that mentally, it can weigh you down. Think about this. I shared this Wednesday. Do you know what the... Not None of y'all in Wednesday answered this question. Do you know what the number one cause of death for an eagle is? Drowning. Drowning. You know why? Y'all all seen that majestic picture where the eagle swoops down, seven-foot wingspan, eyes the size of ours. They can see 400 times better. Y'all all see that eagle swoop down and come up with my 20-pound black bass. Y'all have seen that? When they grab a hope, they will not let go. So when they swoop down to grab something that's too big for them to pull out, they will go down with it, and they'll drown. What is it, church, that you have grabbed a hope of, and it is pulling you down? All right, don't look at your spouse. <laughs> you married that sucker buster. You stuck with him. <laughs> hey, this is not a message. Well, preacher said, I can, no, 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 preacher did not say. <laughs> We do not cut the rope on marriages. <laughs> you come see me, and we're going to talk about how to get through this tough spot. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, it's, you've got to hold to something, and it is pulling you down. Mentally, spiritually, you're drowning, and you can't turn loose. Psalm 91.1 is your solution. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest for the weariness 
that they experience. They'll find rest. They'll find peace. They'll find what they're looking for in the shadow of the Almighty. But I'm going to tell you, church, you got to go all in. As long as you still got a plan B, as long as you still got a plan B, you'll keep doing the same old thing over and over, wondering why you can't get up and over or away from that thing that's got you or that thing that you've got. Think about that. Acts 27, 27 through 32 says it this way. About midnight, how, what time? Midnight. On what night? The 14th night of a storm as we were being driven across the sea. Man, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I had never been in a boat or, or on a vessel uh, that's been, I didn't spend more than one day on, in a boat or on a vessel that was in a storm. I can't imagine 14 nights in a storm. Church, it may feel like that you've been in a storm for a long, long time. This message is for you. As we were being driven across the Sea of Adria, the sailors sensed land was near. They had ways of telling back then, using sound and, and uh, sensed that it was near, 28. They dropped a weighted line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. At that rate, they were afraid they would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. Then the sailors tried to abandon the ship. They lowered the lifeboat. And look at this. Pay attention to this. They lowered the lifeboat as though they were going to put out anchors from the front of the ship. Verse 31. But Paul said to the commanding officer and the soldiers, You will all die unless the sailors stay on board. Verse 32. So the soldiers, the sailors or the soldiers? Soldiers cut the ropes to the lifeboat and let it drift away. Been in a storm for 14 nights. <laughs> and it was the soldiers, the soldiers who cut the lifeboat and let them drift away. Church, plan B is not the answer. Plan B is not your answer. Cut the rope. As long as you think you have another option, you will never fully commit your life to Jesus Christ. We have to come to the place where we know that He is the way, not just a way. We have to come to the place where we know that in our life, He is the way. And when we realize He's not just a way, He's not just B way, he is the way that we'll get in touch with his way because we know that his way is the right way. But as long as we think there's his way and there's B way, as long as we have an option, we will always come to the place where we can choose B. But if you cut the lifeboat away, if you cut that option B away, all you got left is one way, and that's Jesus. And if you'll stay in him and you'll make it work, he'll stay with you. And he's going to make it work on your behalf. It may not be when you want it, how you think it's going to happen, but it'll be right on time. And it'll be his way. And it'll be better. You wonder why you're always going up and down. Up and down. Back and forth. Cut the rope. Cut the rope. And let God lift you up, up, up. Commit your life to Jesus and allow him to prosper you. Let's, uh, let's look at verse 30 again, brother. Can you go back? Then the sailors tried to abandon the ship. They lowered the lifeboat as though they were putting out anchors from the front of the ship. They were pretending to let down anchors, but they were actually escaping with plan B. Church, it's time that we stop pretending. It's time that we start getting serious about our relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know if it's true. I didn't hear a thus saith the Lord, but... When, uh, when Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, uh, only the Father knows these, talking about the, 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 uh, the catching away of the saints, talking about in Thessalonians, talking about that end. I always, ever since I was a kid, I've always thought that that, uh, that celebration, Rosh Hashanah, that's coming up on October the 2nd, it's a two-day festival, and it's called the day no one knows. I always have kind of thought in my mind, no one would know exactly the day and certainly not the hour. 
he could possibly come back on that day. He could possibly come back today. I don't want, I don't want a single one of us that if all of a sudden uh, you hear on news or you see on the news or, or heaven forbid that you wake up and your loved one is gone, that the catching away has happened, that God uh, through Jesus Christ showed up with the last trumpet and those who were dead in Christ raced first and then those who are alive were caught up with him. I don't want you to realize that you've missed that, that you weren't ready that you weren't prepared, that you didn't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you did not have that, uh, and now you're left. I don't want you. I don't want anyone. Here's what I want. I don't want that parking lot to have a single car, truck, or SUV from a member of this church show up to see if anybody's here. I want someone who's never attended, someone who didn't know about Trails Inn. If they come in looking for help, looking for an answer, we'll all be gone. And God's got a plan for that. He's got a saving plan for them too. I don't want us to come here looking because we weren't ready and we weren't prepared. I don't want you to say, well, that preacher, he never told me. Yes, I did. (laughs) So it's not on me. It's not on me. Who knows? Jesus said only the Father knows that. But we ought to be ready every day should that time come. Every day. They were pretending to let down the anchor, actually escaping with plan B. We got to stop pretending and start getting real. We got to start playing. We got to stop playing and start getting real. I had a guy at work, and he told me, well, Sean, we were talking something similar. He said, man, he said, I may rub a little close to the devil. He said, but I kind of, I'm kind of having fun right now. And he like that. I'm kind of having fun right now. I said, well, you missed, the sh- you missed that boat. He's going to give you some more time to have fun with the devil. <laughs> He's like, why you got to put it like that? I said, because it's the truth. Because it's the truth. Oh, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Live how you want to without Jesus. It'll be all right. You know, no, it won't. No, it won't. It will not be okay. Jesus Christ paid full price for your ticket. He already punched it. All you got to do is claim it. All you got to do is claim it through a man named Jesus Christ. (laughs) All right, let's go on. If you want to find rest, if you're taking notes, if you want to find rest, number one, you got to cut the rope. You already know what's got you or what you have you need to turn loose of. Cut the rope. Number two, and then I'm going to, I'll be quick and I'll I'll shut up. Number two, you got to stay on the ship. Verse 31 says this. But Paul said to the commanding officer and to the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay on the ship. We got to cut the rope off plan B. We got to cut the rope off that thing that's dragging us down. And we got to stay on the ship. Think about this. Four quick points. Staying on the ship. Quick, quick. Number one, we got to stay in fellowship. We got a fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. When we feel down, there's others that will help lift us up. We have to stay in fellowship if we're going to stay on the ship. It didn't take one to manage that ship. It took a whole crew to manage that ship. And this is the crew that you have to help manage that ship, that fellowship. You got to stay in fellowship. Number two, you got to stay in discipleship. You got to continue growing that relationship. I'm going to tell you what, when I pulled up in the parking lot and I saw those 30-plus cars sitting there, they were already here, and, and many, and many, many of them were back there in Round Pen Bible Study that's every morning in discipleship, learning more about Jesus, increasing in their faith, and understanding what it is to love Christ more, understanding how much He loves us in return, how much He loves us first, and we love Him more in return. we got to stay in discipleship the next thing is we got to stay in stewardship in stewardship you know uh giving of your time as the lord leads because i was a good steward of the time that god gave me i got me a set of tires stewardship isn't just about your money it's about your time it's about being obedient to what it is that he has for you to do stewardship the the final thing is worship you got to stay in worship 
worshiping the one who paid it all, worshiping your Father, worshiping the Son, worshiping the Holy Spirit, worshiping the fountainhead of glory, God Himself, worshiping them every day because they didn't have to do what they did. They chose to do what they did. And because they chose it, because Jesus said, yes, Father, whatever you want me to do, and, and didn't say, you want me to what? He just did it in complete obedience so that we could have fellowship with God. Think about that. He just did it. Here's the awesome thing about that. The whole reason Christ came is so that we could have fellowship with God. So that we could have fellowship with God. Church, stay on the ship. Fellowship, discipleship, stewardship, worshipship. Stay on the ship. Stay on the ship. This last verse, it broke my heart because oftentimes I could relate to this. And I think if we're being honest, many of us can too. Ezekiel 8.16 says this, Then he brought me into the inner courtyard of the Lord's temple, this would, and at the entrance to the sanctuary, between the entry room and the bronze altar, which this is the Holy of Holies. At the, entry, at the entry room to the Holy of Holies where the presence of God dwelt. There were about 25 men with their backs to the sanctuary of the Lord. They were facing east, bowing low to the ground, worshiping the sun. Church, they were in the right place, but they were looking the wrong direction. They were in the right place, but they were looking in the wrong direction. Worship. They were worshiping creation and not the creator. Think about that. I want us as we go through the week to take this time to spend some time before God. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And the reason I brought that up with this scripture is we can make a habit of coming to God because it's 7.30 in the morning and that's the time I do it. And we sit there and think all, only about all the other things that are going on in our lives and how we're going to overcome these things and how we're worried about these things. We're there to worship God. It happens in the church too. We're here to worship God. But instead of focusing on the sun, S-O-N, we focus on every other created thing in an effort to escape what it is that has us bound. We're in the right place, but we're looking in the wrong direction. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, and he'll help you. He'll help you when you call on him. His name is Jesus, and those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High Church will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Get there. Focus on him. Look to him. Spend that time with him, and then make a habit of it. Amen? I'm praying that the Lord reveal to you what it is that hinders, hinders your focus. Man. Let's go to the Lord. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for this message. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. I thank you, Lord, for the sword of your word. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you reveal to us what it is that's got us bound up or what it is we've got a hold of we need to turn loose. I pray, Father, that you help us to do that. It's hindering our walk with you. Father, I pray you help us get free. Lord, I pray that we put into practice spending quality time with you, not just at the altar, not just at church, all day, throughout the day, just thinking of you, thanking you, being appreciative of you. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you for what you continue to do. Father, help us, Lord, to be in the right place, focused on the right thing, that it is to uh, the right thing of what we need so that we can get what it is that you have for us to get. God, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord, that if there's anybody here who don't know you as their Savior, they don't know you, or they know you as their Savior, but Lord, they just, they never made you the Lord of their life. They've received you as Savior. They've never taken steps to make you the Lord of their life. 
that, Father, I pray that uh, before we leave here today, all those who, who have questions about that or who know full well but they want to do something about that, that, Father, I pray that you bring them up, that you uh, just put it on them, Lord, where they come up and, uh, and have a conversation with us. God, we thank and praise you for this group. Lord, we thank you for, uh, for all you've done, for what you continue to do. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.